Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for March 19th, 2021. Well, my goodness sakes, yesterday we had an exciting day. The bulls were pushing, pushing, pushing. At one point, the Dow was up more than 200 points. And then those doggone bonds really started to um, weigh heavy on the market and in came the bears and we left behind lots of concerning candlestick patterns and price patterns in the charts. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we grab ourselves something to drink, let's settle in and let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Well, good morning, everyone. I am assuming there's quite a few folks out there kind of wondering what the heck happened yesterday. Um, if you remember, I was talking about the possibility and, and the concern and worry yesterday that we were so far extended in the Dow that a pullback could be um, substantial. And although we pushed up yesterday, leaving that shooting star pattern up here raises quite a little bit of concern. Um, in the market. Now, if we take a look, and, and I measured this out yesterday, we we know that um, we have nearly a thousand point decline just to move back to this level of price support in the chart. It would be closer to uh, 1500 points if we pull back into that stronger area of price support in the chart. And I was talking yesterday to be really careful um, about this because if we were to start catching that pullback, it, it, it seems like that's not going to hurt anything in the chart. We're still going to be in an upside trend. But clearly that would be a very, very painful pullback for most folks, particularly those that have been rushing in buying um, this week. So we're going to have to watch that carefully. Now, what created this yesterday was the fact that bonds are rising and bonds are creating some substantial pressure um, and worries um, on inflation here in our market. Now, it doesn't have near as big of effect on industrials and consumer cyclicals and things like that than it does on the tech sector. And so we saw the tech sector really suffer yesterday. And unfortunately, what we have done, um, not you and I, but what the market has done, has placed the big tech giants in the three major indexes, the Diamond Sp and SPY included. And, and they have given, given them these giant weights um, in the average. So the problem that we face right now is if tech continues to struggle, and we have the biggest companies in the world taking up a large, large portion of the indexes, it may be difficult for our indexes to rally if those techs continue to struggle um, and sell off. So you'll want to consider that carefully. Now, that doesn't mean there's not bullish charts out there. That's the good news. But what it does mean is we're going to have to be really um, on our toes as stock pickers um, in potentially the days ahead because we could see some interesting challenges here um, in the market. Now, if the Dow does pull back, no harm, no foul, but it could be very, very painful. And we could also see, we, we may not get that pullback, we could actually just consolidate, just rest. And that puts us in a challenging situation in the market where we have to be pretty good stock pickers to find those uh, good stocks that are rallying against a sideways consolidation. Now, if we get those bond rates to pull back, we could certainly see those bulls re-engage, push right back up and fire to the upside. But as we saw overnight, Asian markets selling off, European markets are selling off this morning. And even though bonds are pulling back, there is some concern starting to be um, raised here about um, inflation. So we're going to have to stay on our toes and we're going to have to work pretty hard when it comes to picking good stock. Let's take a look at the SPY. Now SPY is also remaining in an upside trend and although depending on how you draw this and you saw me do this um, yesterday, 
um, just a second, my tool changed here. Um, when we draw this trend out, we're just pushing right down into that uh, support of that trend. And fortunately, we did break down through that little bit of a support right there, uh, price action support in the chart. But I don't think there's any major problems here. Overall, we're still in this nice bullish trend. And if those bulls can re-engage and hold off of this, as a matter of fact, it could create a good buy opportunity in the charts. However, when we look at the SPY index, um, a massive portion of the SPY index is now um, tied up by um, the big tech giants. And if they continue to suffer, the index itself may continue to suffer. So watch that carefully. We may start slipping into more of a consolidating or even a pullback mode. Um, but if we see those bonds really start to retract, we could uh, get those bulls to re-engage and continue to push on higher. Let's take a look at the Qs. Qs also, um, you know, remaining as our real concern here in the market. And um, we talked about this um, the other day, how we have rejected this price action or this price resistance in this chart uh, twice made that attempt to push up and then we see this significant pushback yesterday and this constitutes a failure at the 50-day moving average now a failure 50-day moving average can create some major problems um, first off um, we could see a higher low and we're trying to do that this morning we're trying to catch a little bit of price support right through here and push up as those bonds pull back. And notice that that could create an inverted head and shoulders pattern here on the chart. So we certainly could re-engage and push right back up. But we also have to consider the fact that a failure at the 50-day moving average, and notice that our 50-day moving average has flattened out, the shorter term averages have crossed through. We have created a significant level of resistance in this chart, which really is, means that those bulls are going to have to work some overtime here if we're going to get up through there. If we cannot get up through there, keep in mind that we could still catch a test of this low that's a possibility in the chart. And of course, when we are in a downtrend, we have to consider the fact that when we make a lower high, we could certainly make a lower low. Um, that would suggest a test maybe down here in that 200-day moving average is possible on the queues. So we've got some questions to be answered here and um, could be some challenging days ahead depending on how these bond markets play out. Let's take a look at our IWM. Now, IWM remains very strong as well. Even though we have seen um, financials struggle just a little bit yesterday, and we've seen oil sector stocks pulling back um, uh, this week, um, running into a little bit of pressure, um, you can see we broke that support, but overall, we're still trying to hold this trend. I don't think we're really into a catastrophe situation as, as much as it may have felt that way yesterday. Um, it really isn't that situation. So we've got three of our indexes relatively strong, but we've also got three of our uh, um, indexes that are heavily involved in tech, and the tech sector is showing um, some challenges here. So um, we're going to have to be careful and we're really going to have to be on our toes. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX, unfortunately, yesterday when we I was talking about how great it was that we finally were starting to see um, a break of this support in the VIX, and some calming coming into the market. Well, unfortunately, yesterday changed that, and we have um, a big spike in that VIX pushing back up. Now, I don't know that that's going to be horrible. Just keep in mind that we still have a significant congestion area of resistance here in the chart. 
But what we don't want to see, we don't want to see that spiking on up and holding a support level in here. So let's keep a close eye on that VIX. It's certainly keeping the stakes pretty high, um, particularly in those options markets because um, of this high implied volatility that we're seeing in these charts. And certainly that worry uh, creeping back in is likely going to spike those a little bit today. So just be a little bit careful here. Watch that closely. Then let's take a look at our T2122, that four week new high, new low ratio. And remember, it has been signaling for some time now that we have an overbought or have been in an overbought condition. And that relieved itself yesterday. So on the good news side, even though we saw some selling, and I'm sure that brought quite a little bit of pain to some folks um, in their trading, um, it really wasn't a terrible situation to see the market pull back. We were, we have been overextended here. Now we still remain in an, um, in a situation where we could see more selling come into it. It's really going to probably depend on those bond markets. Um, notice we haven't even pulled back to the mid level of this indicator yet. So that possibility that we still have that open door here for that downside move. Now, that downside move doesn't necessarily mean we have to have a wave of selling. It can be just a sideways consolidation can have this drifting to that downside. So um, keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be in that precipitous fall that creates that. Um, also, notice that we've opened an upside opportunity now. So if we can get those bulls to engage, we can see that push through back to the upside. One of the things we're going to have to deal with today, unfortunately, is that we don't have a lot of news to really inspire the market. First off, let's take a look at our um, earning, or excuse me, economic calendar. And you can see um, after kind of a crazy week where we got FOMC and we had um, all the hype on, you know, with stimulus money coming out, and then we had retail sales that were ugly. We had housing permits that would decline and housing numbers declined. We had higher than expected jobless claims, and we tried to ignore all of that and continue to move up. Now we've got a situation where we really have not much in the market here for inspiration today on that economic calendar. So kind of keep that in mind. It could be a rather muted day. Um, it may be difficult for those bulls or bears to really gain much ground here. We could just be in more of a resting pattern and really keeping a close eye on those bonds. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar. Our earnings calendar is very much the same. Um, if we um, look at the, and there's about 30 companies on the earnings calendar, but unfortunately, there's only eight of those that um, are even verified reports. And of those verified reports, there really isn't anything that's likely to move the market today. Uh, about the only notable I could come up with today that uh, may be worth taking a look at, most of them are, are really, really small, two, three dollar uh, small tech or small cap stocks would be um, ERJ um, and maybe one of the more notable for today. And that's the only one I could come up with. So not much going on on that earnings calendar as well today, which um, can be a difficult thing for the market if we can't find that inspiration um, in some place to get moving. We could see just that little bit of choppiness or restfulness in the market. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. And I wanna say a thank you to everyone who does take the time to click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment. You know, we have a lot of folks watching these videos and I understand it's hard and not everyone wants to take the time to do that, but I truly, truly appreciate it. It does help the channel to grow. 
And one thing I want to mention today, you guys might want to click that subscribe button because what we're going to do in right way options, hit run candlesticks, we're going to be giving away a $3,000 Falcon trading computer in the the very near future and I'll be posting information about that here in the channel. Now this is the computer system that I use. I use the Falcon Trading Computers. They are a fantastic machine with the best customer service I have ever seen and um, they just they're just run like champs. They're great computers. Um, so you have an opportunity uh, become a subscriber to the channel. Take a look at that um, as I start posting things about that upcoming drawing. You may want to be a part of that. And so take a look at um, Hit Run Candlesticks or Right Way Options and make sure you're participating in that opportunity to win that $3,000 computer. Um, and by the way, it is a fantastic, and you can use it, you can customize it, you can add to that cost if you want to. You can, you can buy uh, uh, monitor arrays with that $3,000, whatever you choose to do um, uh, through the Falcon Computer Company. So great machine. Stick around, guys. You may want to be paying attention to that and those posts that will be coming on that drawing. Let's take a look at um, the stock setting up. And um, remember, these are not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Um, they are... Um, something that you could put on a list and pay attention to and make sure you do your own due diligence and evaluation of the charts and never ever blindly, never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas until you understand the risk, the setup, and the why of the trade. Let's take a look at a few of these stocks. Now we had some uncomfortable situations going on yesterday, but one of the things I want to point out is that we still have some um, dividend paying type stocks and uh, those industrials were holding up very very well yesterday and let's take a look at a couple of those now John Deere continues to run in this very very strong upside trend and I wouldn't want to chase this just yet notice we caught that little bit of pullback in here that little bit of rest is coming in maybe a little pullback a little rest and then watch for that next opportunity just like this rest right here and catch that next opportunity into the trade one of the things that we always think about in trading is oh the pullbacks are awful but honestly the pullback is what gives us an opportunity so look for those stocks that are resting or pulling back and take um, advantage of that opportunity to mark up those charts and prepare for those potential trades. One of those charts that I'm keeping an eye on, as you guys know, I've been talking about it here recently, is Disney. Disney resting, pulling back. We've kind of, uh, we've finally engaged our trend here. And I wanna be watching this for that opportunity. If those bulls are gonna step up here and maybe push this through, we may be ready to extend this trend to the upside. So keep a close eye on that. You're also, I think, going to wanna keep an eye on um, some of the defensive sector type stocks and good dividend paying stocks. We've been seeing um, stocks like MDLZ has just really surged here recently. Now this is not a buy in any way, shape or form yet. This is just to show you that some of these nice, old, boring, dividend paying stocks really brought came back to life here in the last couple of weeks. And any rest or pullback or consolidation in here could set up that next opportunity in that trade. Now you guys know that I have been picking up some of these trades. Um, I've been mentioning 3M on a longer term chart. And here's the daily, but let's take a look at that weekly chart. And here's that pattern that I love to trade and I trade it over and over and over. Break that downtrend prove to hold that downtrend as support and that's important don't anticipate that it's going to hold it as support make it prove that it's going to hold that support buyers step up here and notice no pressure on that trade 3m doing a great job here so what i would want you to do is keep an eye on 3m and any rest or consolidation in here setting up that next opportunity into that trade. So keep an eye on 3M. 
I would also suggest that you might want to keep an eye on Altria. Now, Mo has that same pattern. We come up to that downtrend, we're challenging it, we rest and consolidate, and then pop buyers come in. Taking no heat on this trade since our entry into this in right way options, and obviously, beautiful chart. Now, any rest or pullback sets up an opportunity here. Now, these are these big dividend payers that you might want to keep an eye on. I mentioned AT&T could be in that setup pattern. Here's that downtrend that we see in the chart, and we're trying to consolidate that move, trying to hold. Now, AT&T still has some major problems to deal with, and that is this resistance in the chart. So you may just want to wait. You may want to wait for that to break through, find that support, and look for that opportunity in that trade. There's a lot of these charts starting to show those kind of signs. Let's take a look at KHC. KHC is something I hold. KHC um, is a, um, a nice old divvy payer stock. Um, and we know packaged foods right now are doing pretty well. And if you take a look at this, this nice little resting consolidation here over toward trend, we're really in that situation here where we could see this continue or begin to continue to extend to that upside. So keep a close eye on that chart. Other places that I think would be wise to take a look at, we've seen in the energy sector, XLE, We've seen that energy sector catch a pullback here. Let's notice this chart here. This is the daily. This is a huge break of a um, that downtrend. And now we're getting that resting pullback. We're pulling back and we're gonna test whether or not we can find some support in here. This would be the kind of chart that I would wanna be watching for that next opportunity. I think we all agree that um, oil is probably going to go higher and if the economy restarts and things get going, we're gonna be burning more of those fuels. So keep a close eye on that. There may be some opportunity coming up in some of those oil sector stocks. Um, and last but not least, I got to tell you, um, these little retail um, stocks have just been beautiful trades, easy to trade. And notice that we've got KSS resting and pulling back in here, um, potentially re-engaging its trend. We want to wait for those buyers to step up. But there's an opportunity there, perhaps in UAA, we have that same kind of opportunity where we've been resting and consolidating here, um, holding in our trend, holding in a major support area. Watch this for that next opportunity to the upside. So everyone, hey, I wanna wish you all a fantastic day and I wanna wish you a great weekend. Um, thank you everyone for all your kind support and those folks that, a big shout out to those folks that have been supporting the channel through the buy me a coffee link. You can find that right underneath the title of the video. Um, truly, truly appreciate that guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And I want to wish you all a safe and wonderful weekend. We'll see you right back here, bright and early Monday morning. Have a great day everyone.